When I realized that I was actually going to uh, make a movie out of the novel The Godfather, uh, I, I sat down and uh, began to read the book very, very carefully. And I think it's important to put your impressions down on the first reading because those are the, the initial instincts about what you thought was good or what you didn't understand or what you thought was bad. And so I took the book and I actually uh, uh, wrote my comments right on the, on, on the book itself. And having gotten through the book with these few notes and comments, uh, I then made a, a prompt book out of it. A prompt book is sort of an old tradition from theater. And basically, you take a, a sheet of loose leaf paper, and I sat there myself, and I cut out uh, this, this hole in the middle of the page. And then I pulled my book apart that I had made those comments on, and I myself pasted uh, uh, every page of the novel onto sheets of paper like this so that, of course, you could see both sides. And, uh, and then I put really good grommets, those reinforcers on the hole so that that wouldn't tear. I think I put them on both sides. Let me just check. This is years. Yeah, I put them on both sides because I was aware that this, this prompt book was going to be my master kind of uh, uh, document that I would work from. And uh, I called it the Godfather Notebook and put a big warning if found return to this address for reward because I recognized that it would have every uh, opinion that I had on the book. And um, interestingly, I decided to break down each section with these um, key criteria. This is a very big one because it was the wedding scene. One was synopsis, to synopsize that particular part of the book, uh, a paragraph or two saying what up to there really had happened in terms of the story. Number two was the times, which is to say, how did what happened in the story at that point, how do the times bear on it? In this case, it was the 40s. So after World War II, America had a certain style. Hey, my sister's wedding. Every scene, I was relating it to the period. So when I then was told by Paramount that the movie was going to not be shot period, it was going to be contemporary shot, which is to say the 70s, the fact that we were going to shoot it in Kansas City, I really you know, had a very hard time accepting that and made a big point that it had to be period. And I, don't, I didn't even remember why I did, because obviously that was going to make the movie more expensive, which is not what they wanted at all. And it must have been because I had just gone through this vast, big, thick book writing notes as to why it had to be, you know, what the 40s had to do with the story. Imagery and tone, this is, of course, uh, images that seem to stand out from reading it, or even the tone of the story. Number four, it says the core. And this is something I think I borrowed from Ilya Kazan in his notes from the way he broke down the play Streetcar Named Desire. It's published uh, in, uh, in, in a book on directing. But for five, I put pitfalls, which was to say, how can I screw this up? What are dangers, um, uh, things that you want to avoid or, or, or uh, dangers that you very easily uh, uh, could find yourself in? Clichés, Italians who would talk like this, failure to make a convincing setting, boring. People must feel that they're seeing the real thing with hundreds and hundreds of interesting specifics, like the children sliding around the sandwich man, throwing the sandwich. Hey, Bino, two gabagol and one prosciutto. Losing a basic humanity to all these people. Failing to set up a tension between Godfather and Michael. Too much exposition. And I went through the book again. I used to schlep this around in a big bag that I had. And I would sometimes go to a, a cafe, in particular in North Beach. I used to go to the old Cafe Trieste and sit in a corner with my Olivetti typewriter and this book. And as I would go through the book for each uh, division, and really I made up the divisions. I broke them down. I noticed here scene one, scene two, scene three, but they didn't exactly follow the chapters. It's sort of what I felt was scene one and where it ended. What was interesting is that by doing that, after I had gotten through the whole book, I was able not only to have those first few notes that I had written in the book, but I had the big wide margins that the, the prompt book pages gave me so I could in great detail chart what I thought was happening. 
this document was a kind of multi-layered roadmap for me to direct the film. And I remember when I did direct the film, although there was a script, obviously, I tended to take this around and uh, work on The Godfather. Uh, again, I had that kind of canvas bag where I could carry this. And I was more interested in really working from this because uh, on one level, it had the actual book rather than a screenplay. Uh, which would have left so much out. And so I was able to review not only Mario Puzo's original text, but all my first notation as to what little, little signs as to what was important to me or what I felt was really going on in the book. Scene 26, Michael picked up by Solazzo and the killing, parenthesis, key scene. The core, to show the killing as terrifying and explicitly as possible, having taken the tension to an unbearable degree. To further define Michael's character in regards to his cool, totally calm execution of these men. Pitfalls, rushing this would ruin it, otherwise the scene can't be ruined. That's good to know when you're just a sit poor little director sitting there and somebody says the scene cannot be ruined, so you know you've got something. As I was reading the book and making these notes and then putting them on the margins, obviously the more pens I was using and the more ruler lines and the more squiggly lines uh, sort of implied the excitement of the book was higher and higher so that this, the sheer amount of ink on the page would tell me later on this is one of the most important scenes. Design this scene shot for shot. Important, the audience knows he is not following Clemenza's instructions. Clemenza had told him specifically exactly what to do. And if you see that he wasn't doing it, it would be suspenseful. Hitchcock, designed, he chokes, frozen time. Hit hard and bloody, his fork frozen midair. Gun almost against Salozzo's head, really close. Get this for the audience. Mist of blood. We went to great length in that scene to put mists of blood in the air. McCluskey's fork frozen midair as he watches Solozzo's brains fly through the air, his own choking when shot in the throat. There's an asterisk. An asterisk in a book or a script for me means a super important part. The gun in his hand, he starts to leave without dropping it. That's what Clemenza had told me to drop the gun immediately and he's going and he's not dropping the gun so hopefully the audience is dying. Drop it, drop it, drop it. He jumps in the car and rolls away. All very easy, should be easy. Michael disappears, we don't see him. Now pick up the tempo. So I knew just from looking at all these colors and things in the book that this was gonna be a very, very important scene. And indeed it was, not only for uh, the movie, but for Al Pacino, because it was in that scene that the executives of Paramount Pictures first caught a glimmer that maybe I had not been crazy in wanting to cast him. I'm in the Sicilian section. I see it says the core to show how Michael meets and falls in love with Apollonia and demonstrate that he intends to marry her and indicate Fabrizio's desire to go to America. Five, pitfalls. If Apollonia doesn't make your heart stop just to look at her. If the coincidence that the innkeeper is the father of the girl they have just seen seems contrived, if it is funny, it will not be. If Michael's quick decision to marry her seems unlikely, if Michael in a subtle way does not have the quality of a Don. On page 79 of the book, we have the actual shooting of the Don. Whenever I felt there was a really important part of the book that was going to be in the movie, I would sit there with my ruler and really underline. So this details the shooting, my, my margin notes are, the shooting, great detail. The Don is the main character of the movie. So as in Psycho, we are totally thrown when he is shot. How would Hitchcock design this? Hitchcock was such a master about manipulating information for the audience, usually telling you things uh, so that you were equipped to enjoy uh, what, you, what you were seeing, rather than withholding information, he would give you information. Design carefully. The rolling fruit. Sound off stage. An appearance of total confusion. 
I had done this preparation before I wrote the script, so I wrote the script from this, but the script was really an unnecessary document. I didn't even need a script because I could have made the movie just from this notebook.